In the last video, we stopped on this slide, Chapter 2, Part A. This is Chapter 2, Part B. One of the course goals is to share with you some of the findings from much research into cell biology. And one of these major implications is that within cells, the shape of molecules is one of the most important factors in determining what happens. If the shape is correct, a chemical reaction has the potential to move forward. If the shape changes, then the potential for that particular reaction does not exist. As this slide shows, uh, when you have a single covalent bond holding the structure of a molecule in place, in many cases, that bond has rotational freedom. In figure A, the covalent bond between the two carbon atoms in black has a rotational axis around the plane of that bond. So that could change the position of the three white atoms which are attached to each of the black carbon atom. In the bottom figure, you can see that the two carbon atoms are connected by a double bond. This is how a double bond may be represented in a dye. In this particular case, the two carbon atoms are prohibited from rotating around that axis, and therefore the shape is very stable. It's said to be fixed. Covalent bonds themselves can be subdivided into two categories. We have the non-polar covalent bonds and we have the polar covalent bonds. The ultimate distinction is based on where the shared electrons are located in space between the different parts of the molecule. An analogy works best in this situation. Imagine you have two teams of tug of war, people pulling on a rope in different directions. If both teams are equally balanced in terms of power, then the rope will be equally distributed between the two teams and the flag will be halfway between each team. This is equivalent to having a non-polar covalent bond. The pull on the electrons that are involved in the covalent bond is equal from both sides, from both atoms. Therefore, the electrons are generally found equally distributed between the two atoms. On the other hand, in a polar covalent bond, one team is stronger than the other. Therefore, it pulls the flag more towards itself than its opponents. This is akin to what happens when two atoms are pulling unevenly on a pair of electrons inside a covalent bond. The atom that pulls on the electrons with the greater force has a more negative charge because the electrons are spending more time in and around that atom. The other partner has a slightly positive charge because it has lost control over those same electrons. In chemistry, there is an electronegativity scale which measures how powerful a particular element is at pulling electrons towards itself. This electronegativity scale is a pull factor and it relies on the number of protons in the nucleus of that particular atom and how far the electrons are from that particular nucleus. With respect to the periodic table, electronegative elements are in this region of the periodic table. Of the biologically active elements, oxygen is the most powerful, followed by nitrogen, sulfur and phosphorus. The presence of polar molecules within cells is instrumental in determining how chemistry operates and functions. Water is the most prevalent polar molecule inside cells. Therefore, anything that has a polar component itself be likely to dissolve in water. So polar dissolves polar, non-polar does not dissolve polar. This slide compares two molecules, each of which contains an oxygen on the left, we have a water molecule, and on the right, we have an oxygen molecule. In an oxygen molecule, the two oxygens have an equal and balanced pull on the electrons that they share in their double bond. The electrons spend most of the time equally distributed, therefore neither side of that molecule has a positive or negative charge. On the contrary, with respect to a water molecule, the angle at which the hydrogens are bonded to the oxygen makes one end of the molecule slightly negative because the electrons are spending more time in this locality than they are in the locality of the protons of the hydrogen atoms. So water molecules by default have a slightly negative charge where the oxygen is and a slightly positive charge where the hydrogens are. This is a dipole. So two of the most important determinants of molecular interaction within cells and outside cells happen to be the shape 
and the charge on molecule. This is the key concept in this class. If you understand this, then all subsequent chapters will make complete sense. Returning our attention back to water molecules, we discussed earlier that water molecules are polar in nature. Now, the hydrogen atoms between adjacent water molecules, neighboring water molecules, are attracted to the electrons on the oxygens of their neighbors. And this fleeting attraction, which may last fractions of a millisecond, is enough to hinder the free motion of water molecules. Hydrogen bonds are basically transient molecular interactions between hydrogens and electronegative atoms. What are the implications of polar water molecules? Well, the implications are huge, as our president would say. They influence the chemical interactions within and outside cells. They influence the physical properties of water and other chemistries. They are key to life and living things. Under physiological conditions, water molecules and many other polar molecules within cells have the potential to break down. In this particular example here, you can see acetic acid has a hydroxyl group on its end and under appropriate conditions, the hydrogen is removed from the oxygen, resulting in its association with water molecules to form an hydroxium ion. This can change the pH. Much research is suggesting that the formation of aberrant chemistry within cells can lead to mutations and other destructive outcomes. Free radicals are mischievous atoms or molecules which are missing their own electrons. They tend to sequester electrons from normal cellular chemistry, causing it to become defective. Free radicals have to be controlled. Otherwise, the destruction of normal chemistry within the cell can lead to cancer and many other outcomes. Water produces powerful free radicals when exposed to ultraviolet light. And this happens during regular sun exposure. Cells do have a number of mechanisms to capture and eliminate free radicals. One of those is the powerful bleach known as hydrogen peroxide, which is found inside peroxisomes. This slide concludes the first module in chapter two.